I thought England's performance in Canada was, started slow, but they improved immensely as the tournament went along. Um, I think when they set up against France, I, I felt like the tactics were wrong, if I'm honest. I think a lot of people were on the same um, thought process. Um, they didn't really set up to win the game. It was just to defend and maybe hit on the counter-attack. And I thought, um, oh, here we go again, kind of thing. But no, I think they really improved. Mark Sampson really changed personnel, uh, formations at times, and he really got them believing um, in what they were doing. And the Norway game for me was, was the trigger, um, the big performance that really, um, you know, people stood up and take notice. And I think that they grew in confidence and the performances were good from that point on. Um, so it was, a, it was nice being over in Canada, you know, hearing the, the Canadians and the Americans over there that were um, where I was working. And it was just hearing how good they thought England were and certain players singled them out. So it was, um, it was a good performance by them. Because I played with the pl players for so long and, you know, some of them, my friends on the team, I really wanted them to do well. And, I know how hard they've worked in the build-up to that tournament and past experiences of, of being knocked out quarter-final stage. So to get to that semi-final, um, you know, and narrowly uh, missing out on that final, just the performance on that day, it could have gone either way. Um, and then the performance against Germany was really outstanding. Never beaten them before and turned up and, and beat them on a penalty. Who would have thought that? Um, so, no, it was, it was pleasing for everybody um, involved in, uh, you know, in that World Cup. I think you can see from the, the England players that are involved in the World Cup in Canada, you know, the, it's really risen with uh, the amount of thousands that they've, they've gained along the way. Um, and I think with the BBC picking up all the games, that certainly helped. I think the, the, the general public of England could follow the stories um, of the players involved and really get behind the England team. The games weren't on at an ideal time, so people were staying up at midnight and watching um, the girls play so it, it's really pleasing to see and then I think you can really connect with the fans through Twitter through Facebook and I think the fans really appreciate that and it's a different way that the women's game is compared to the men's game you know the, the figures that are, are flying about right now for certain transfers and and fees I just hope that clubs don't see it as we're spending all like the American League we're spending all this money on players and we're not getting money back through ticket sales so I hope it doesn't go too too far like the last two American leagues and, and, it, and it ruins the game. I think building it slowly and steadily, um, certainly in England, is the way forward. Kopi was a character, put it that way, she was very confident in her own ability. She, she was quite a scary goalkeeper to play against because she was very vocal, very aggressive, very down, down your throat kind of thing at the referees, very intimidating to play against. Um, but off the pitch, you know, she's calmed down a little bit, having been out of the game for, for nine years since her retirement. But I think she's still got that feistiness in her, and we'll see it tonight. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that's why we played at the top level um, for so long, both of us. You have to have that fire in your belly, um, uh, competitiveness that we both certainly have in abundance.